I love the 2004 hit 13 going on 30 because why wouldn't I? It's great. So today I'm gonna talk about why I love it and why any counter opinion is stupid. I was 10 years old when this movie came out. And even now, I have this uncharted affinity for Jennifer Garner, and I think it's solely because of this movie. I mean, I've never binged Jennifer's catalog. I didn't watch Elektra. I don't know who did. I just remember recently watching a Capital One commercial, and all of a sudden I'm fucking Leo, and I felt whole inside. I felt safe. So you have Jennifer Garner and her love interest, Mark Ruffalo. Who the fuck casted this? You might recognize Mark from the Marvel movies, but just this part. <laughs> Never again. Speaking of battle royales with over 50 million downloads, rated 4.6 stars on the App Store, free to play on iOS and Android, this video is sponsored by Zuba, Zoo Battle Arena. This game is actually fun. <laughs> it is. Choose from 20 warrior animals with unique special attacks where you can get up to three different types of weapons. I got a shoddy too hottie, I got a nade, and I got a spear because I'm humble. And in honor of the video, I'm rocking with the Mark Buffalo. Team versus team mode is a thing. Clan mates or random teams, you can get busy. Oh, that guy's super weak. That guy's super weak. Bah! I don't have a med pack. I don't have a med pack. No! You can get revived too. You'll need that. I still haven't won a game. Not sold? What? How about loot boxes? Everyone's favorite draw. New characters new items new phone who this let me get out of here let me get out of here the block is hot the block is hot the block is hot take him out take him out, take him out. give me that med give me that med my nickname in game is mr gg so go to the video description click on those special links support the channel and get 50 coins and 40 gems pretty straightforward and thank you zuba for sponsoring this video so why is this movie my guilty pleasure well i would say in the realm of rom-coms 13 going on 30 is much more chick flick-esque than a rom-com like meet the parents so it's tradition around here to not like this movie testosterone doesn't want me to like this movie but fuck it's so comforting let's review 13 going on 30. oh and also don't be shocked to see fellow youtuber amanda the jedi pop up throughout the review she was nice enough to give me some of her thoughts as well and as of right now i still don't know if she likes it or not 13 year old jenna rink is blinded by the yearn to be cool she wants to be a part of this group called the six chicks subtle name her best friend maddie is a woke anti-vaxxer who genuinely cares for her and would totally take her down given the lob i mean the beaver made her that tom tom calls him a beaver tom tom is the name of the bitch i mean the beef made her a dollhouse from scratch took him weeks to make doesn't matter because this guy probably smoked a cigarette once first off thank you so much for having me on to weigh in on this very important topic but i would just like to point out that one of my favorite fun facts about this movie is that brie larson is one of the mean girls and not just her also Ashley Benson, AKA someone who starred in Pretty Little Liars alongside Lucy Hale. See, it's all connected. So I haven't watched this movie in years, but I remember it being super charming and heartwarming. And honestly, after going back through it, I definitely still agree with that take. This is one of those movies that I used to watch when I was younger with my mom. And I feel like it's probably constantly playing on network television stations on lazy Sundays and it deserves it. This is one of those iconic instant classic movies where you kind of find out that through life, the things that you think you want the most aren't all they're cracked up to be. And learning the joys of just being exactly who you are and living your life that way. Um, they're here. Dad, you promised you were gonna stay upstairs. Go! The fuck? Hey, 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 I'll pay these bills, okay? I'm the reason you and your stupid ass little friends aren't gonna starve today. Have fun, baby. Tom Tom tells Jenna that Chris, that's Marlboro, wants to play seven minutes in heaven, but it's a lie. He actually wants seven hours in juvie because they just steal her food and serving bowls and shit. You forgot to steal my heart. I forgot to mention Matt put wishing dust on the dollhouse. I think in the 70s, they had a different name for that. So when he comes back down, he goes into the closet instead. And Jenna's a wee bit salty. She's surprised with the beaver rather than a dick. And that's what we call a successful double entendre. Thank you very much. Like button's right there. So she yells at him, slams the door, recalls a magazine cover she was crazy about that glamorized being 30 flirty, and thriving, and wishes for it as she knocks some wishing dust on herself. And no, this isn't a Freaky Friday or face-off situation. She travels in time to when she's 30, and that is how we begin the fish-out-of-water shenanigans. I can't imagine a world where a child would wish to be 30 because to a child, 30 is 
ancient, which makes me want to die inside. But hey, she got her wish and apparently uh, just became a horrible person as she grew up. After destroying this absolutely amazing gift that her best friend got her, she gets her wish of 30, flirty, and thriving, but it's a hell of a lot more like 30, cheating and stealing. Now in my very biased opinion, Jennifer Garner bodies this role. Remember Denzel and Glory? Yeah, that was cute. Oh, I'm sorry, has Meryl Streep ever thriller danced in a tutti fruity Adobe Premiere dress? I didn't think so. So Jenna begins to realize she's living her dream. She's high up at Poise Magazine. She ended up becoming the leader of the six chicks, which they had to kick a girl out, which is actually a line in the movie thoroughly enjoyed. And also a boyfriend who's a hockey player. Hey, if a hockey player is afraid of commitment, does he get cold feet? Hey, sweet Bob. <sighs> hey, sweet Bob. Where's the conditioner? You're naked. Not yet. Okay, I would have done a hell of a lot worse than pop an umbrella if somebody flashed their wang at me, just saying. Not yet. So I'm re-watching this for the first time in years as a Canadian and Jenna's going through all the pictures on her office walls until she comes across one with Rudy Giuliani? Why? In the future, Jenna's best friends with Tom Tom. They both work together and their boss is Richard. You're my boss. That's right, baby. Who's your daddy? Wayne Rake. Now. Fun fact, Mark Ruffalo is obviously a part of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mentioned Elektra, played by Jennifer Garner, which is Marvel. Back to Richard, who is Andy Serkis, or otherwise known as Claw from Black Panther and Age of Ultron. And as Amanda mentioned, Captain fucking Marvel, Brie Larson, is in the movie as well. And I mean, there couldn't be more, right? Tom Tom, Judy Greer, Ant-Man's ex-wife, I count it. Matt's fiance in the movie, Wendy. Silver Fox from X-Men Origins. Put that in the same timeline. She went from banging the Hulk to Wolverine, AKA. Are you okay? Blink twice if you're okay. Or just queef or something. And for bonus points, young Matt, Sean Marquette, voiced Spider-Man in the 2005 game, Ultimate Spider-Man. So next time you talk about this movie, don't refer to it as 13 going on 30. Call it what it really is. 13 fucking Avengers in the same movie or the alternate title, Avengers. Or Team going on 30 missions together. I had a good start with Thor team and then it died off after that. So Jenna, lost, tracks down the only person she can depend on to explain what's happening, Maddie. And Mark Ruffalo bodies this role. He's just such a fucking potato, it's perfect. He doesn't care. He's too cool to care. Matching? Pfft. I'm clothed, isn't that enough for you people? And he's also got this mwah, yummy little salt to him for their first couple interactions. Now I won't spoon feed you every scene, but spoiler alert, Jenna starts to realize she is a horrible person. Tom Tom's still fake and she should have never did Maddie dirty. <gasps> what are you doing? What's wrong, Pookie? Pookie? <sighs> Pukie? Incredible. I will never say something that powerful in my life. didn't stop us from rattling some desk drawers loose last week. See what I mean by 30 cheating and stealing? Like honestly, if you're gonna home wreck one of your employee's life and cheat on your New York Rangers boyfriend, at least do it with someone who doesn't look like they just got hired to be the flasher in a women's safety PSA. Jenna ends up discovering that Matt has a fiance and she doesn't like that. By the looks of it, I don't even think Matt does. Do you care about anything? But regardless, they keep hanging out. Which I just love that once she realized she was fucking pookie at the office, who has a wife who works at Poise, she was like, I'm dumb being a homewrecker. Except for relationships I disagree with. Jenna, this is Wendy, my fiance. Wendy's a, uh, a an anchor woman. Anchor person. I do Persons. the weather for WWE in Chicago. Actually, Matt and I were just talking about him finally joining me in the Wendy City. You're moving to Chicago. Yeah. We were just discussing, uh, we haven't really- So after reconnecting with Maddie after being a massive bitch to him when they were kids, she's essentially homewrecking his entire life. Like she pops up acting like they're 13 again. He's super confused, but he also has a fiance like he's getting married in two weeks. Though it is weird that he seems hesitant to move to the same city that she lives in, so they're just gonna be like long distance married for a year or something. I just, okay, maybe it's not that serious. Two, two three. three. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, so weird. I guess technically this makes you a swinger. Hey, hey Matt, hey, hey Matt, 
You know you're engaged, right? So I like to imagine this movie from his perspective. So you're about to get married. You've acknowledged that you don't have that head over heels feeling that you used to have as a kid and you just assume that that's part of growing up. Then your first love shows up after years of being a bitch acting the exact same way she did when you guys were close. This is like the ultimate what if your high school crush revealed they were into you years later fantasy play out. Except, you know, he has a fiance. Didn't have to play Wendy this way. I did skip over the most iconic scene in this movie, and I think most cast members would agree. I know that for a fact because I watched a bunch of interviews that didn't end up contributing shit to the script. <sighs> but at least now I know that Mark Ruffalo didn't like the script when he first read it. He's like, man, this is kind of dog shit. We should all work on it together, cause you suck. Back to the most iconic scene, the thriller dance. There's a party, it's dead, and Jenna's like, hey generic DJ, maybe if you weren't playing royalty free Kevin MacLeod, people would dance. So they throw on thriller, Jenna starts hitting the neck twitch and the clap and slide, and it's adorable. But more importantly, were whale tails an actual fad at one point? Seriously, I don't remember. There's one portion of me that's like, yeah, that was a thing, and this other one's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Was that like sexy back in the day? Hey yo, come here, <laughs> with that fat ass wedgie. So Jenna's place of employment, Poise Magazine, is getting smoked out by Sparkle Magazine. They always seem to hit their ideas first, and we discover that's because Jenna's a conniving little shit. She's been selling out Poise this whole time. But current day Jenna doesn't know that yet, as she rushes to pitch Poise's new look with the help of Maddie's photography. Now, if you were gonna play double agent for your place of work's competitor, why would you have the pay stubs come to your current place of work? And if you didn't have them set to be delivered there, why are you storing them at your current place of work? Age of Jenna wasn't just a bitch, she was dumb too. Now I do actually really like her idea of going back to the basics, reminding people of a simpler time and what really matters, like it's great. But then they ended up with an everybody claps moment. Oh my god, an 80s throwback, how inspired! So aside from the whole cheating scandal, it's for love. Shut up. Matt's a fucking idiot because he shows up to the office and Tom Tom, the woman he has zero reason to trust, he doesn't even like her, tells him that Jenna decided to trash his photo idea and go with a better photographer. And he buys it like the stupid buffalo he is. And she's like, yeah, I mean, I think they're great. So if you want to sign a general release form, we could probably use them somewhere. AKA, she's going to sell that shit to Sparkle. And he signs it. <laughs> it's the early 2000s. You have cell phones. Call her, fuckalo! He even has the audacity to say, Yeah, I never trusted her, don't worry. I just forked over all my hard work to this bimbo because I'm a greasy sellout. Found this in your office yesterday. Does it look familiar to you? It has your name on it. What is this? I don't even know what this is. Okay, you can wipe off the doe-eyed Bambi watching her mother get shot and strapped to the back of a van look from your face. Sick reference though, bro. Oh, thanks, bud. Dude, your references are out of control. Everyone knows that. So we think Lucy's a bitch, but she's literally just doing the same thing that Jenna's been doing, but she just did it back to Jenna. But that's other Jenna, not current Jenna. So current Jenna immediately has to go find Matt to tell her that everything Lucy said was a lie, but it's Matt's wedding day. So yeah. She crashed the damn wedding. Full on fantasy fulfillment. But we don't get the wedding crasher ending. He says it's too late and just gives her back the remnants of that dollhouse. Kind of like a look, you were a huge bitch and that's why we're in this situation. So thankfully the magic glitter is still working and she makes it back to that closet, has her redo moment with Maddie and then like says that they're gonna be late for something and walks out the door and then suddenly it's them walking out a different door married. So wait, did she still mentally skip her entire life except this time she wasn't a bitch about it? Because like they literally leave the basement saying that they're gonna be late and then they're married. Like I feel like that can't be what happened and they just took us from point A to point B way faster than they normally would have but like why would she have said we're gonna be late. I think she just got to skip her whole life again. Wait, did the Ruffinator pioneer the selfie? Overall 13 going on 30 is not only my guilty pleasure, but my comfort food. And re-watching it again and discovering Vienna by Billy Joel is only a cherry on top. Either way, iconic movie, do not let adulthood turn you into a bitter prick. Life is already gonna try and fuck you, so you uh, might as well enjoy it. Facts. Please go check out Amanda the Jedi. She's a great content creator. She busts her ass, she's popping off. She reviews TV shows, movies, you name it. Big shout out to her for helping me out. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is yours. Second reminder to please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my patrons for supporting the boy. I didn't put their name up on the last video, my bad. So they're here. Look at them. 
I love these people. Shout out to Joe B for retweeting my last video tweet. Subscribe to Mr. GG Live. And as always, I am Mr. GG and I am out.